Welcome to assembly, assembly, assembly. Welcome to assembly. It's good to have you here. Are you ready? Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to Assembly. It's our fourth Assembly of this little series looking at Easter and the Easter story. We started with Palm Sunday when Jesus came into Jerusalem. We have then had the story of his supper with his friends and the story of when he was betrayed in the garden and him asking God for strength. And today our story gets a little bit sadder because we're talking about Good Friday. The day that Jesus was tried and crucified. But there will be hope to come because our final part of assembly will talk about Easter and the celebration that we can have. And do you know what? It's been a rough old year for all of us, hasn't it? And so we really need things to celebrate. So what better to work towards that celebration of Easter and then hopefully that time when I won't be talking to a camera and an empty church, but I'll be talking to you guys either here in church or down at school and we can have some fun learning about God in our hearts. But for now, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the stories that you give us. We thank you for the ability to learn about you, to know you in our hearts and minds, and to follow your example. We pray as we learn together today that we may grow in faith, love, and understanding today and forever. Amen. Now here's our story. Welcome. Um, it's me again. Yes, I talked to you about uh, that Jesus guy who came here on Palm Sunday. Well, do you know what? It's all changed. I tell you, it's all changed. God, he was a wrong one. The authorities, um, the Romans and, and the, the Jewish leaders told me that. They said, he was a bad one. And they tried him. Oh my, that was a bit, a bit scary. They were whipping him and beating him and telling him various things. But he was weird, actually. Because although there was all this frightening stuff happening around him, he was quite calm. And although people were putting a lot of accusations to him, that he was trying to overthrow the government and that he was a, a bad, bad man. Do you know what? He didn't really argue back. In fact, you, you could say he, he showed love. But they still tried him, they still found him guilty. They still, all oh, the crowd were out there. You heard me shouting with the crowd there. All of them were out there. And we were really, you know, and, and the Roman guy said, do you want to, do you want to let one of these other criminals go? Or Jesus go, Jesus is your, your person. We said, no, let Barabbas go. Let one of the criminals go. Jesus needs to be crucified. And so they've taken him up to the hill, up, up, up that way. A couple of other criminals, and he, he's carrying his cross, and, and they're going to nail it to him, and, and, and that'll be that. Well, he's gone, it's all over. And I can't see, yeah, we'll probably just get on with our, our ordinary knife. I can't see anything really changing from that, but I don't know. 
I don't really know what to make of it. Hmm. I, w I wonder if Reverend Stu can help. So haven't things changed? From Palm Sunday when that fellow was rushing in shouting about how he was uh, celebrating Jesus and waving flags for him and all the rest of it to, to today where he seems to be saying, oh, I want him punished. I'm punished for crimes which many people would say were, were non-existent or even made up. He did seem a bit confused though, didn't he? Maybe you are. Why, if somebody is so good, would everybody turn on him? And there's two things that are important in this story. One is to understand how human beings are. We praise people, we make them really popular, and then we knock them down a peg or two or twelve. And Jesus was seen as a threat to a lot of powerful people. And so a lot of people were interested in shutting him and his friends up. Because when movements like that threaten a comfortable life, which Jesus was doing, then a lot of people don't like it. And the other thing to remember is that this was all part of God's plan. It says in the Bible, God so loved the world that he sent his son for us. We are taught that Jesus came because he wanted to teach us a better way to be. But he also wanted to break the, bar the barrier between life and death. And that barrier between life and death was seen as all the wrong things that the world has done. We call them sins. The things against God. Because we know that when God created the world, he did it because he loved us. And so, by Jesus dying on the cross, that justifiable anger of God against all the wrong things, was changed and Jesus died for us and the thing that comforts me about all of this story is if I know that Jesus who was God has gone through such a difficult time the worst you could ever imagine then I know when I pray to God, when I call out in my times of difficulty, I know that God understands what that is like. And I know then that he will be with me and he will answer my prayer. Jesus dying on the cross is probably one of the biggest and most important things about our faith as Christians. It must be important because the window behind me is one of the oldest parts of this church. Stretches back right to the beginnings of when this church was built. And you don't often see it because it's tucked away behind the choir stalls but it's there and it's beautiful. And it's a reminder how the early Christians and all Christians see Jesus' death on the cross as being massively important. Because when Jesus died, he died to show us his love for us. He died so that all the things we do wrong could be forgiven. And he died so he could be, and we could be, reunited with God. And we'll see how that happens when we come to our final part of the story and talk about Easter Sunday. 
Dear Lord, we thank you that you had died on the cross for us. We pray that we may turn away from our wrongdoing and live in your love and strength, knowing that your death on the cross shows that you love us forever. Amen. So thank you for watching this assembly and hopefully getting some understanding of the importance of the cross and Jesus' death on Good Friday to all Christians. Through that we know that God understands and loves us. And so as we finish this assembly, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us. Thank you for understanding our suffering. And thank you that the story doesn't end here, but ends with the love and the hope that we see on Easter Sunday. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all, today and forever. Amen. We'll see you for the final part of the story at our next assembly.